So our guest speaker this morning is Kyle Miller. Kyle is a Canadian-born entrepreneur, author, and branding specialist. In 2017, Kyle received international recognition when he competed on the PGA Tour, becoming the first professional golfer with cerebral palsy to reach golf's highest stage. Kyle has been published in Golf Digest on numerous occasions, along with being featured on PGA Tour TV, Globe and Mail, and Radio. In 2021, he published his first book, Unique Perspective, Keys in Realizing True Potential, offering each reader the tools in developing their own unique process and mindset in overcoming limitations on all scales, both in business and life. So give me one second here while I pass it over to Kyle. All right, please help me welcome Kyle Miller. Welcome. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, thank you everyone for having uh, me and everyone today. Definitely appreciate it. And hope everyone's doing well in these times. I see a lot of faces at home, all of us doing these Zoom calls. It's pretty common now. But uh, yeah, no, uh, a bit of a brief background was basically in uh, in that description of myself. I was born with cerebral palsy. Um, you know, up in Canada, I had surgeries and, and some help, but the doctors kind of mentioned I was going to be limited to braces and collecting a disability check and living with my parents. So a lot of my success came from the Shriners Hospital um, for children in Spokane, Washington. That's where I had uh, the majority of the surgeries that really changed my life. And I would say that that's really where, you know, uh, I developed a lot of my resilience through that disability and through the Shriners Hospitals. Um, and yeah, so that's exactly why, you know, through my business and brand, you know, I published this book here. We'll post a link somewhere um, in this at some point so everyone can have a copy of it and uh, check it out. But you know, as a kid, a lot of the doctors were, you're hearing a lot of negativity, you've got a disability, so you really have to learn to adapt and move with things. Um, I wasn't in a scenario where I could put it aside or try to do something else. I had to really embrace what I had. And embracing my disability was embracing failure um, in, in a lot of ways. That goes, you know, from tying my shoes, to dressing myself, to whatever it may have been that the average person would have maybe taken for granted. Um, and, you know, looking back when I was a kid, I was taking in a lot of this negativity and, you know, uh, doctors telling you what wasn't going to be. And that's when it clicked, when I was maybe about nine years old, eight years old, when I realized, what if I flipped the table? So what if all of this negativity turned into my greatest asset? And that's really when everything started to change. For me in the hospitals, going through the surgeries, I was able to have an outlook that I was going to move forward. But I realized that as a kid, I was about in these hospitals before the internet was really created. There wasn't an example. I couldn't go on Google and read about somebody like myself that had overcome this disability to create whatever level of success. And remember the average token of what my success was going to be was very what we may call dismal or very unfortunate you know what they they didn't think I was going to have an average life let alone what I went on to achieve um and you know that is also in a big way you look at um when you're a kid sitting in a hospital and you're setting your goals you realize I realized I had to make goals that were exceptionally high something that was um, out of reach. And that's where the love of the resilience and failure came into appreciation because I realized that I was working towards something better. I wasn't really stuck in where I was, even though like I was really far off from where I was ever gonna be. So, you know, you can maybe think, well, I was fortunate to get into Golf Digest. I was been blessed in my life in many ways, but I do believe a lot of that comes from the disability becoming the asset rather than the thing that just kind of knocked me out. 
Um, you know, I would say also early on in life, we learn our resilience levels. We all have different lives. We come from different childhoods. Um, I think that's a key role in understanding where you pick up some of your weaknesses and your strengths. You know, from, you know, when you're five to nine years old, you learn a lot about yourself. And if you look back in your life, some things you take for granted until later on, it kind of hits you in the face that you have to work on that weakness. Um, you know, in, in, as I was a person with a special needs or a disability, one big thing I did, and I still do this in my business today, is rather than sourcing out something that I don't have, and dwelling on what isn't there, I, I would fix and, and bang on the weaknesses. So, you know, a lot you might get some advice in life, lay on your strengths, you know, stay away from your weaknesses because you're just gonna, you're gonna progress quicker with the, the strengths and I can agree with that to a certain extent. But if you avoid the failures, you know, and this could mean talking to people, this could be making sales calls, this could mean follow up, this could mean how you operate your everyday habitual habits and waking up in the morning and working out and handling yourself. Um, this can be, you know, anything in that aspect really, but looking at what you have in front of you and what you can improve is, is really a key to developing your own self resilience. Um, you need to work through that, those weaknesses, rather than just kind of working on a strength and then backing away from it. Because down the line, you'll need that stuff. Um, when, when I look back in my life, I was thankful that I learned to communicate with doctors and nurses early on. And through my surgeries, it got better. So you realize my, my communication skills went up. So, you know, that led to me learning how to be resourceful, building relationships with people. So that could be something, you know, you're looking at your life right now, your business, who do I have around me that I can, I can nourish that relationship and lead you to something that you may, may be beneficial for both. And what I'm getting at is through my life, I really had to learn how to communicate what I needed because I didn't, I couldn't get it with my disability disability so somebody else needed to be convinced to do it so that comes back to selling your resourcefulness and the, the beneficial between each other and that could be through failure a lot of times i've asked for help or tried to reach out to people or even source out even um, anything really networking sometimes it doesn't work out sometimes you don't drive with personality sometimes you don't handle the the, the interaction properly but, you know, I would say that those are the keys. That's, uh, you know, going into those failures with people and communications and your, your business. Um, you know, that's really going to help yourself. For example, you go through a pandemic right now. Everyone's had to learn how to have some level of resilience. We all got a punch to the mouth, whether we liked it or not. Everyone in the world had it. We couldn't avoid it. But the, real, the, the, the big key about it is when you were looking at adapting our businesses or growing or, or becoming better, um, you know, in these times, I'm spending a lot of times calling my customers, asking what I've done wrong in the past. Why haven't I collected a sale? Why haven't I done business? What did, what did I do? And, you know, those calls are tough sometimes because you're bringing something up you might have done two years ago, an interaction that didn't handle well. You didn't call somebody back. You didn't handle your habitual habits properly. So it didn't lead to a good interaction with somebody. And those are the times where now we really realize um, it's important to have to deal with those tough moments, you know, because especially when we're adapting and we're building a new brand and business and stable, I would, I would say that a big thing that I noticed a little bit is sometimes people are forgetting what they had before a little bit, the people. The communication, the, the, the conversation, letting resilience is developed by um, uh, dealing with people and, and communicating, um, embracing the failure. I, I wanted you to know when I got into the PGA Tour event, I had been told probably 19 times no before. I had gotten a no, I had gotten a story on why it wasn't good enough and, you know, why it wasn't, why it wasn't a fit. But I kept jabbing at this. And, you know, 
that is where the persistency and in, in going through the, the failing moments, I didn't just leave it. I would improve and then keep jabbing at it. A year would wait and I would jab at it again even harder. Or I would go one year where I would jab at seven exemptions and see how it all turned out. Most of it was a no. But, you know, if you think about your greatest goal, and you think about, if I got that, how many no's would you be willing to take? A thousand? A hundred? A million? Are you willing to go through those times you take some risk, you put a little money on the line to meet somebody, to interact with them, but it still doesn't work out? How many times can you hit this phone and somebody says no, but you still keep banging this thing? And, and that goes back to your relationships is, is through your developing good communication. How it really helped me as a kid when I didn't have it is, you know, people were telling me it wasn't going to be much, but the, the nurses kind of, yeah, you could do this. You know, a lot of, a lot of my family really got nervous that my goals were too high. They kind of thought I was a little crazy, you know, like why so high? And because I knew the level of height that I was going to need to chase would increase the amount of failures. You need to, you need to fail a lot to be able to have any successes. And I think that's um, a big key thing. Um, is, is making sure you're failing and embracing it rather than avoiding it. I've heard a lot of, of people give advice before talking about avoiding um, failure because it's just a waste of time or to learn from somebody else's mistake. But that's where the, the, the piece of developing your own self resilience is lost. You learn from someone else's mistake only, you, you develop what you're, you're really needing yourself. And that's what I'm getting at. Down the line, it will, it will come back and you know, whether it be in your life, your personal life or your business, it'll come back and it remind you that you need to work on these piece. Um, you know, I go back to this, like tying my shoes, it took me probably 50 times longer than any of you with one hand. All of that little stuff is really good. Looking back, that just that just kept me just banging. And that's what we all need to be, is being persistent with it, being persistent with all of that. Um, you know, my, my brand and my business, a lot of people the week that I was in the PGA Tour thought I may have failed. I shot 101 and I, 88 in two rounds. So I blew my brains out. The worst score I ever shot in my career. But I killed it that week in developing my brand. And I flipped the table of what you might read in some of those articles. Kyle Miller finishes last, shoots 101, 88. I, I, I built a business off that week. I literally left a job and took the most what some most would say, well, he made it, but he blew it. No, I flipped that. I went and turned the business into something that went on to become even more successful in just that one week or that job that I ever had. And I think that's a big key. If I didn't have my disability, I would have taken that week as a failure. I must have stopped. I wouldn't have been able to flip it and think, well, I made that one, one massive goal of making it to a PGA tour event. So, I mean, you have to roll with that. You have to, when you, when you have something tangible and every one of us has something tangible, I truly mean this, your greater purpose will be found in your resilient moments and your weaknesses. What I mean is my greatest, greater purpose is not golf. It's not whatever money I could ever make. It's to help people that kids that were in my scenario realize there's something greater for them. And not might not be in golf might be just in getting a successful job, going to university, having a family. Some might go on to be excessive like me, but that was my greater purpose. And that was found to me inside the depths of my greatest sorrows in the hospitals. It wasn't outside of it that I found. It. That's why I wrote this book. And you, you know, there's a, there's a hospital bed in, in me complete, a complete metaphor of where my life had gone and we all have a greater purpose it's in your weakest moments in your hardest times that you'll find your greatest opportunities you just have to kind of be willing to look and, and be patient um you know and it might not hit you right now it might hit you a month from now 
might hit you a year from now, but persistency is the key. I want you to, you know, another example of what I would say that I'm thankful for, I kept being persistent. And when I got into Golf Digest the first time, that happened because I was sitting there working for $12 an hour at a minimum wage job, reading a magazine. I read the article and at the bottom of the magazine, there was a spot that said, if golf saved your life, email us. So what I did was I took my communication skills into play that I learned through the hospitals and took this phone and I banged on it and I put one good email together and it hit me two years later though, where they wanted to publish it. Not then, not a month later, two years later it took. But I can tell you that that all comes from sending one good email and having a good story, the persistency to push it. I had no success then. I mean, I was... I literally was a guy with cerebral palsy that, that uh, liked golf. And, and, you know, you'll notice your greatest moments of what you're chasing will come from what you, you didn't realize. You go being persistent to an opportunity. You might always think, okay, I'm going through some failures. I look at failures as just the rounds. It's just, it's part of the process. Every no I get is part of the cycle. I'm closer to a yes. If I talk to a hundred people, I might get a couple of yeses, but if I talk to 10, I'm not persistent enough. I'm not high level enough. I don't think high enough for myself. I don't push it. I'm, I'm going to get one maybe, and I got to work hard to get the one. Yes. We need to keep, you know, you keep hitting it. Um, you know, especially in today's world, I will say one thing that we have to be resilient with is our, our people communication. I keep stressing this because we're in a digital world today. But what happens when we do go back to seeing each other again and you have to have lunch with somebody and you have to really remember what's going on a little bit like that that's going to come back one time or another or it might might be a long time out. But what first will happen is phone call skills. You know, you're going to we'll all develop, but you can develop your resilience in your business or your life that way. Call somebody that something happened with, you know, face the beast. I talk about that in this book. I talk about embracing failure, embracing the beast. You don't avoid them. You have to literally take them and, and look at them straight on and, and, and do it a lot. Um, and look at your highest, what you, what is your greatest goal? You have to really think about that flipping. I went from realizing, I realized I had a disability like I did. And I realized if I made it, ever made it to a PGA tour event, that was going to be something that was unattainable, like less than 1%, right? Less than 1% of golfers ever make it to that level. But I asked myself really early on, what if I have cerebral palsy now? What are the odds? Real low. I had some zeros before that 1%. And that is the key that kept me going was such an exceptional push. If it was the goal wasn't high enough, I wouldn't have been resilient enough to keep failing and, and, and just keep going at it at a different level. A lot of conversations... You know, I've been fortunate in my life to play golf. A lot of meetings with people and helping me with my golf career could have never happened if I wasn't comfortable with embracing my weaknesses. That's your story. Your greatest attribute is your weakness because that leads you to your true holistic story. You don't hide from it. You're facing the beast. When you do that, that's when everything comes to light. I've realized this through my career. You know, I thought, um, my story could have been the golf success nods. It's never that. It was always the greater purpose I seen as a kid to help those kids in those hospitals have an example. What that that is already over over surmountable than what I can ever do. You know, if you help a few kids that way in your life, I've done my job already. But the key now is responsibility to keep that going forward. That greater purpose comes from your weakness. Um, I think that's an important aspect. I, I think that's what we do with our business a lot. You know, we do, I do branding. I do help companies with branding, um, you know, and, and helping them develop their story. But it's also even, you know, have a say, if you have a sales team and you've got employees that you need to get engaged, some of them aren't hitting hard enough. If they don't do it. They're not going. You got to get them into a culture where it's like, well, how many calls are you truly making now today? Let's get resilient. Let's bang on 200 and get 195 no's. And how good does the five yeses feel that day? You got to 
really get people twitching on not being afraid of the, the you know, a bunch of the rejection. My, my book had a lot of rejection. My, my whole golf career had a lot of rejection. And, but, you know, all of that just adds to what you makes it all better. It's, it's all ironic. You know, you'll, you'll know I've, I've been so blessed in my life. I can't say that enough. I'm very grateful beyond measures. You know, I never thought I would get into golf digest. I never thought a lot of what was, has come to me in my golf life and my professional life has come. But um, I think a lot of that comes from the, my ability to keep at it, keep being resilient, taking risks and a lot of failure. A lot of people don't take a lot of risks. You know, you have to develop, develop the, the attributes to be able to take it. And, you know, um, People, people skills are the biggest way to develop resilience. Going and, and asking people about what happened, what, what happened with the relationship, what happened with a business partner, what happened with the sale. Because that will lead to you realizing, what do I got to clean up a little bit? Um, follow up. You'll notice it later in this pandemic, I'm sure. I see it already a little bit. Businesses aren't very resilient with follow up. We don't want to follow up like we have to now. Most, mo it's not like it was before. Now you really have to get people's confidence, their buying confidence back. As a business owner, I think that's the biggest thing that will be stressed of resilience is sales teams and the ability to um, work through that is how do you gain that customer's confidence and how do you amp your sales team up or yourself if you're that business owner to make enough phone calls? It's not all going to run, you know, the social media, we all understand what you're going to get out of our, we're going to get out of our e-commerce now. I get that. It's, it's been max. It's been very clear, but you know, the, the phone call is still a big piece and where's my weaknesses. What about, it's the most perfect reset ever in our lifetime. I can't stress that enough. It's the only time you may be able to call a customer five years ago and say, look, what did I do? What can I do going forward with you? Can I get another meeting with you? Even if it's through zoom, because this is the one reset that everyone can appreciate. And, but you, you might not get that again, where, you know, before it, things were expectations. You, you got these a great opportunity that the reset of everything we're doing, I see as the opportunity to fix what weaknesses were before. You see, it's the same thing that's carried over in my life, just from a hospital bed to a business or to my, you know, to my personal life. And, you know, that's a, a big key. Don't, don't uh, steer away from failure. I, I want you to know that I could have taken an easy way out of cerebral palsy. I could have just accepted the easy pathways that were out, and, you know, avoided a lot of the, the failures I faced. But I, I set goals that were too late, too high. I, they were pushing. They were just every day was going to need it, you know, and, and it sends a shock to the system. You know, if you, do, if you don't get prepared and work on those weaknesses, everyone's good at their strengths work on your weaknesses and then develop relationships. Uh, you know, the amount of network that you get from working on your weaknesses, you, you get, you, it expands like no other. If you just work on your strengths and yeah, you got your supporters, but where are your supporters and your, and your beneficiaries for where you're developing yourself and building character? Because that's your story. Life's not about what you achieve. It's about what you overcome. You know, do you, you, you think about it? Um, that's, that's what I'm saying about with my story. It's not what about I achieved getting into a PGA tour event or anything, golf died, nothing of that. It's what I overcame. That took me 20 years to truly appreciate, even though I knew it, I really had to take a lot of time to realize that that's, that's the secret. And we all have that, but we have to, you have to truly look back on what are my weakest attributes and how, how can those benefit others? that will lead you to a successful way in life of being blessed. And, you know, uh, I, I can't stress that enough. I, when, you, when you're when you told you're not gonna be able to do nothing, you have limitations, you truly have to keep to yourself and you have to have enough self-resilience to not listen to it. I can't tell you how many times people told me I was nuts. Like just straight out told me it was never gonna happen. Now, you know, what do you think they thought? What do you think they think now? But it's not even about that, but it is. You see, it's my self-resilience to not put up with listening to it. Even your, 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 your closest family members might not be your, the support you need. Know that. 
they might be trying to keep you safe. See, the, the disability threw safety out of the book for me really early. It was, it, I couldn't sugarcoat it. I couldn't play in the sand and suck on my thumb. I was sitting in a hospital bed, getting told what my life was gonna be. It's five, six, seven years old. It was hard at the time then, but it was the, the best, best thing that ever happened to me. I'm very thankful that I went through that and went through all those operations and was blessed to have the opportunity. If I didn't have my disability, I wouldn't have been where I am today. And that goes to show if I didn't have my weakness and appreciate it, I would have never been able to create any success. We all have special attributes, helping people and talking to people. As business owners, we're here to solve problems. You know, we're here to help each other. We're here to support systems. My, as I mentioned to you, I'm here to help brands and businesses be able to tell their story and engage their, their sales teams and also develop my greater purpose. So here's an example. This book, If once you get this book in the back of the book, you're going to realize I call out how many books I'm going to sell in my life. And it's an exceptional amount. This book benefits the Shriners Hospitals. That's what this, this book does with along with pro, some, some proceeds and such. Benefit giving books back to kids so they can read. They can have this to go away from the hospital and think, you know what? There's more to what I just learned or what I can do. Because this is an exact example of somebody who went from the hospital bed right there. And the amount that I need to push for this to support the kids and my greater purpose when I'm gone is exceptional. But that's going to require extreme failure, persistency, and embracing the adapting and growing. But the purpose is that came when I was in a kid. This, this whole thing about that, my whole brand and my whole business came from my greatest depths and sorrows. You're not going to do anything, Kyle. You're, you're going to be embraced as the rest of your life. It came from the problem. It didn't come from talent. You know, I, I'm relatively talented at golf, but I'm more talented at selling or talking to people probably. And that's going to benefit more of my business and the, and the longevity of my personal life. But I, I really think that everyone has, we all have, we might all have different issues going on in our life. People have addictions, people have different things, mental issues. If that's your weakness and you work on that, that'll lead to better parts of your everyday life. This isn't, doesn't have to be about your business. It can be about your everyday life. Just even perspective. The whole, the whole point of this book's title too was everyone else's perspective of my life was pretty poor. But I knew mine was going to have to be unique to do anything. And that's why it's titled that. I, mean, I had that years ago, and I, re I remember writing it down when I was right when I was publishing the book. I wrote, wow, what's what is this all about? Well, it's about the unique perspective of what you can do with your life, not just listening to other people. It's a big, powerful key. And if you have the ability just to make your everyday life a little bit of um, you know positivity, then that's all it is. Each day, not every victory is going to be magnitudely big you know i always i talk about it in my book i've used it in my life small victories lead to massive successes but you need to learn how to get a lot of yeses and a lot of successes like you need a lot of yeses you need to learn what it is to win and then you take the risk you learn to you got to have a little bit of love in there you can't just fail 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 but you have to learn how do I appreciate today in my habits so that I can be better and feel better and operate better? And if that's what happens that day, then that's it. How do you go for a run and just, that's all that happens that day? How do you start talking to your staff better? It doesn't all have to be magnitudely big. The selling piece could just be a matter of making a proper client list at this point. It, you know, it's just don't overlook the basics. That's one thing that I was forced to really appreciate was, I couldn't, I couldn't overlook basics because I didn't even have that. So I had to figure it out. So, yeah, you know, I, I really do want everyone to know, and you, I hopefully when you read my story and you read this book, you realize that you, if I can achieve what I've achieved in my life, and I've more, been more than blessed and I'm very thankful, 
you can achieve anything that you may desire. You just have to be willing to set your mind properly in goals that are high enough that create levels of persistency that are called upon that will create enough failure. So that's the key. You have to be persistent enough so that you know the height and you're going to, you're going to have a lot of failures ahead. You can't just push a little bit and then be like, well, I just got a little bit of backlash. Like go make 250 phone calls and then see what comes back. And what you'll notice is that's going to lead you to something. I promise you it will be frustrating, but something will come of it. You got you can't even stop hitting this thing. You just got to start these phone numbers in here. Just bang, leave a voicemail voicemail somebody's going to pick up somebody's going to be wanting to call back and if they don't call back hit them again because persistency will also show your follow-up skills and your appreciation for that individual that's a big boat i mean people are missing right now you imagine all the people that you have on your e-commerce right now i try and get those phone numbers and, and, and hit them with phone calls right now i don't want to just buy my products i want to talk to you now Cause like, I want to make sure I have that still, cause it's still, it's still, you know, life is a, about helping people and businesses of people think still, you know, and that's, you're going to be your greatest key. I believe of develop goals that are high enough and take them incrementally, but be persistent. It might be on something basic. It could be cooking. You could cook bad for two weeks. You're going to learn a lot about yourself for two weeks in the kitchen. And you'll, you'll pick up your habits. You'll pick up your mindset on, on what, you know, not don't cook angry. Have you ever watched somebody cook an angry meal and watch it turn out? Right. Imagine doing that for two weeks. You'd have to flip the table. I say at some point you got to flip it and be like, no, somebody says you, I need five good meals out of you. And if you know that you're going to fail a hundred times, you better start banging. But people get scared of that. They're, they back away from like, well, the no or the rejection or loss of money or, whatever, you know, it's, it, you got to go for it. You only live one time. That's one thing I'll tell you. I'm so thankful. I've went through all my risks and everything, especially with the pandemic happening. You got one go at this. Don't look back and let it be. What did I do? That's what I looked when I was a kid. I said, I have to create something that is so exceptional. When I leave this earth, it, it's known what what you can do with your life, not just what people set on you. And I think that's something we can all do. That's all for your own different levels in life, your business, or whatever you want to achieve. Um, but I believe communication is the key to developing resilience because that will give you the yeses and nos. But I believe you need to set goals high enough that create calls of action that you're going to have to be so persistent. It's almost going to it's going to drive you ludicrous a little bit and then you go hard at it and you take the wins out of it go back in the list and call some people that haven't bought and ask them why they didn't buy ask them how you can gain their business now if you could gain business from somebody that hasn't bought from you before or now that's how you know you're developing the communication skills and the common ground because you're regaining trust in one of the hardest times that we're ever going to have in our there's no shortage. There can never be a shortage of customers. We can net you that. I think that's a big thing. Why this phone is so critical. I keep saying this, but I think it's a massive thing. We we're all getting away from it, but the warmth, there can never be a shortage in this, in your contact list. You ask yourself, when's the last time I called everyone in my phone, in your business phone or your contact list. When's the last time I just wish them well, hope they're doing well. Even if they bought in something from you, you'll probably be like, well, it's been a long time. I don't think mine goes a couple of days. People be, people want to call me back. So they're like, will you stop calling me? Let's just do this. What are we looking for for golf lessons? Or what are you doing? What, what can we do together? That's the level of trust that you want to build in your, in your business, not just through the online, but knowing that there's a voice behind everything and there's a person. But, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, I, I break down in this book about embracing failure, developing your own success and seizing your own moment. Like I said, it's all different for us. Um, the push of, of, of sales, I, I, you know, being resilient right now, anybody that ever told you that um, sales wasn't important or money wasn't important, sure learned something during this pandemic. 
They learned how key cash flow is. That's where that's where I believe you know you'll you'll be able to capture that that resilience with your teams too and, and your own business. Just call people and talk to them. The first call doesn't have to be about selling. It's just about communicating, creating warmth. And and you know I talk about how you can take those little steps and then elevate those to whatever extent. As I said, I went from being a kid in a hospital bed to you know setting history on the PGA Tour. None of it should have happened. And I think that's something I want everyone to know is like none of my success should have actually come true. A lot of persistency, resilience, and, and luck was needed to be involved. But if you don't take risk, you won't get lucky. You know, you got to get blessed. You know, we all have a purpose in life. And if you want, if you're willing, if you're, if you're looking to be blessed, you know, you have to be selfless and be willing to take risks that benefit your greater purpose that building this book took me some risks to help my greater purpose, but you have to be willing that because eventually someone will be watching over that, you know, something that's ironic. I'll say the same day I turned professional on July 4th was the same day I got notice I was getting into the PGA tour now. years later. So think about this, you know, I, I achieved the success in 2013 of, of the turning professional and setting history that way. What does Golf Digest have to write about if I don't succeed? Probably just like I told you, a kid that appreciates golf, that loves golf. No, it, 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 now it turned to the kid that set history. But what's ironic enough, and I truly believe about, you know, everything is meant in a circle if you are habitually doing things right, is the same day I turned professional, July 4th, it was years later that I got an email that I was into the event on the same day. You, you think about all of the odds of even think about, like I said, less than 1% of people will ever get to that level. What are the odds that it happens to a guy with cerebral palsy and he gets noticed the same day that he set history years before? How many zeros do we add to this? That's what I'm saying. It's all a level of, I would have taken 10 times more of the failures and no's to get that same yes. And I knew it only then. I only knew it then that everything else was worth it. And that's what I'm getting at. You have to be willing to fail enough so that when it does hit, you realize that's what it was all worth. All of the struggles before are irrelevant. And, and that's going to be a big key to whatever your goals are, making them it happen. Um, that's, you know, that's a big thing. I find that ironic in my life, how that worked out, you know, somebody must have been watching over me and knowing you think about a kid when he's eight years old, Colin, playing in a PGA tour event and it happening when he's 26, you know, all my haters don't know what to say now. They didn't know what to tell. They knew what to tell me no before, but now they're like, well, I don't know what's next for him. That's why the whole, the greater per purpose was not the golf and I realized that after I achieved the golf was it was the helping the kids helping others overcome limitations and having an example as I said anything you read about me in golf is is I'm very blessed and thankful but it's not what my win is and we all can help others if you're willing to help yourself you can help others and just helping others feel good is enough in your business if you solve problems you're going to you're going to help others. If you want to create enough wealth, you have to think about enough scale. Mm. Right? If I want to help enough people in this world, I need to sell millions of books, not thousands, millions. So that's the, that's where the level of persistency of that has to go through. And you think, take those into your own life. You want to start working out, just stay consistent with it for five days. Develop some level of persistency. If you fail, if you fall off the rocks and you miss a couple of days, just have a moment and reset, go back to it. I can't tell you how many times I was doing physical therapy and I fell on my face. Who thought I was going to be able to swing a golf club? Right. And you, if you see me swing a golf club, you don't even know I have cerebral palsy. If you see me walk, you might have a better chance. You see, that's, that's, that's a big piece is it's all irrelevant. Failure is irrelevant. It's just part of building up to your own success. And I, I do believe people developing relationships with people and communication is the, the absolute key to developing your own resilience. 
because you need to be told no you need to be told you're crazy you need to be told yes you need to learn how to flip it you know i remember at times asking one time asking my business sitting down for meetings for a hundred thousand dollar contracts and one of my team members thought i was nuts and she says to me why don't we just like go for 5k and i'm like what's the purpose then do the taxes on five thousand dollars why are we here i went away that whole conference with notes we we're flying back she's like well we failed i'm like no we didn't i just got comfortable talking to 50 people asking them for a hundred thousand dollars how did i fail two weeks later i was closing some deals for 20k or so so she thought we failed but then two weeks later it's like oh how'd you get twenty thousand dollars or how'd you get ten thousand a lot easier because we were asking for 100 get no's the five and stuff should be easy we should be picking that off on natural we need to think higher be well not a lot of people can say well yeah i've been through meetings and asked for that for support in my business or my brand not many people can be like yeah I've done that Le years later i went on to signing contracts working for companies that were over a million dollars do you think i was going to be comfortable as a 30 year old signing contracts for over a million dollars if i didn't understand how to ask for a hundred thousand a few years before and get told no not at all so i was signing contracts to gaining commissions from all of that experience before and that leads to the comfort people were blown away how is this guy comfortable with asking for that well, I'm one in a million or one in how many million? That's why. And you need to, you know, I always say to people, appreciate your value. Don't lose, lose that. If you believe you have something, then you believe in it. And that's the big key. But yeah, what we'll do, um, I think, Stephen, we'll put a link in this chat or do you want me to put one in here? Um, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Put a link uh, in in the chat where people can uh, grab your book. Is it available on Amazon? You know what? It's I'm doing all of it through myself because um, so, you know, that's, you know, so with our business, um, we, you know, hopefully entrepreneurs read this and we have a branding business where that's really the way that I capture my sales. So, you know, the problem with selling it on Amazon is mm -hmm. you, you take this book. I, I, once again, I can't be persistent with you and contact you. I can't get you on the phone. So, you know, I sell what we're doing with this initiative. As I said, I'm doing an initiative with the Shriners hospitals with this book directly, where this book will be given as a gift two kids when they leave the hospitals to go home. Um, and that's also why we're doing it through, you know, through our company is because to do something of direct initiative that way and to scale it, um, it takes a lot of organization and, uh, and we need to be able to capture our supporters. So I have a direct website that has e-commerce. You can get, um, you know, it can be mailed to you. There's an ebook too, just so you're aware, if you are somewhere that it might be tough for me to get it to you. I do recommend you purchase that and then it'll just be emailed to you. Uh, Ebooks popular, right? But yeah, I'll, uh, I will put uh, a link in here in the, uh, in yeah, the throw, throw it in the chat for everybody. And actually let's, let's just open it up to uh, Q and a right now. We'll just, you go into gallery mode yeah. uh, view and just unmute. And, uh, if you have any questions for Kyle, please, please jump in. I, I'll, I'll kick it off. Uh, I'm curious, did you have any mentors early on that, that helped you realize, you know, what, what you needed to do? Um, well, in the hospitals, you know, you know, I think your, your mother's probably, probably one of my mentors at how we got through that stuff. You know, I had a golf coach through my teenage years, I would say in my younger time, that was pretty influential. I think uh, he's even dedicated in this book somewhere in the front. I put a dedication to him, Marty. Um, but, you know, I think uh, I also talk a lot about that in my book. You know, I think my life's been full of not one mentor because of my disability. I think that's one thing that I was an advantage was because I had a disability. There was some sympathy. So people would have been a bit more adapt to help me. So I, I was able to develop 
more than one mentor. You know, Marty was big in my childhood, but business wise, you know, a lot of that's been through clients and entrepreneurs that are successful and, and stuff that way that have taught me about selling and sales and, and building a brand and, and building a successful, you know, business and such. Um, and also through these times, you know, I've, you know, if you, you look at this, this book, um, there's, there's partnership in this book with Maxagram. Um, that's been a long time supporter of, of Kyle Miller and, and my endeavors in my professional golf career. And that, uh, this book will actually come to life with Maxagram with a video. So when you get the book, download it, um, download the app and then it'll come to life. So that's an example of, you know, mentors building on relationships, not leaving them, you know, it's, constantly gaining them I, but I, I will say you know I, I think there becomes a point in life and in business more so I've learned this in business too you have to be willing to take your own risks and you're going to have to do it without support like there will come a couple times where people are going to say like I don't think you should do this but you just have to do it and you have to that's where the self-resilience comes into play knowing that gut feeling like when something has to happen, um, and that could be, I've done that on a few scales, playing some certain events, publishing this book in these crazy times. Like, you know, that was all done on, on my, you know, my behalf in a lot of ways. You'll have to take some risks that you just trust. That's a big side of people telling you, you no, know, and you saying, well, no, I'm still rolling with this. Yeah. You, you know, I think there has to become a level of insanity a little bit to get through it because you're going to have to, you're really going to have to sit back a couple of times and, and be like, what am I doing? Like, this is crazy. I'm just keep getting no's. Or you have to take a massive risk. I've lost a lot of money in my golf career taking risks. But if you ask me how much money I may have lost, if all of the, everything of the brand that I have today, it's, I don't even care about it. It's like the least up worse on the totem pole but most people wouldn't be willing to sacrifice the amount that i did just yeah. to develop it and that the chances are slim not all your mentors are going to be able to say what you're going to be able to do i mean it's hard to call what somebody's capable of. i'm very i never tell somebody what their capability is and when i have a lot of people that come to me as wanting to them you know some mentorship help and, and i never really truly tell somebody what i think their potential is yeah um because I, I think that's a big thing i don't know i just i just saw a, a message in the chat here someone um is interested please tell us more about how to deal with haters yeah i mean you just get more in front of them like just keep keep doing your thing and making it expanding you know make it so that you are you you make it clear that you're bigger than that, that hate, you know, um, a lot of people are just jealous a lot. Really the, the people aren't well, the, the haters are just willing to not be going through the stuff you're going to have to, to succeed. So you just have to keep pushing, you know, keep being resilient. Even if you're failing and your haters think they got a one up on you, whatever because eventually like you're going to have that persistency level that makes something kick you're going to get a level of success it's just too much the haters are looking you're looking down on that con you'll realize it was a waste of time to even pay attention to them but you know some of your your haters are your greatest supporters the social media thing you know it's great you light some of this stuff up your haters will spread it and then they'll buy your stuff Make yourself so known that your haters are forced to buy your stuff just to keep track of what you're doing. Hmm. That's what I want this book for my haters. If anyone want to buy it, <laughs> all right, right? I, heard you, it here. I want them to buy the book. And there's even a chapter about the haters in here a little bit about appreciating that level of, oh, well, he's not going to do it. It's they're just not willing to go through the resilience levels. And now I would say, you know, my haters nowadays they don't know what to say they just avoid yeah. you know they might the, this the haters change you'll get different haters as it goes they'll never stay the same you know because eventually they'll be like wow he's achieved some level of success i mean what do you think my haters say 
no. Well, yeah, that was the kid that I told he wasn't going to turn professional when he was 13 years old, and then he's been in Golf Digest. What are they supposed to really, you know what I mean? They, if anything, you probably pop up on their social media because you're succeeding. Yeah. You know, well, I, I think. You, you heard it here, everybody. If, if you hated Kyle's talk today, please, please buy his book. Um, yes. Did you, did you throw the link in the chat yet for everybody? I'm just uh, doing it now. I was trying sure. to not be in the middle of messages. And then uh, we'll have time for one last question. Just uh, we'll we'll end here right at right at ten. Uh, so is if anybody has a burning question, please unmute and jump in right now. I see the link is there. So uniquePerspectivebook.squarespace.com. Yeah, you know I, I see one here. Here's an example. You know, um, you know an apprentice golf professional from Ontario, expanding being, you know, to building relationships. And in 2017, I'll give you an example of how I did that. Did that. If you Google me and you type in Kyle Miller golf and you go to videos, there'll be one that pops up from the PGA tour. That's an example of how I expanded my situation and developed relationships where I was part of hosting a clinic for Shriners patients from all over the world to go to that PGA tour event and have an hour long clinic of lessons on the driving range and interactions with the PGA tour players where we did that on PGA tour TV. Now that is an example of me being resourceful and building relationships. But I will say that level of heightened success came from me creating that success in the 2017 PGA tour event without the, the, that event, I don't think that happens. So that goes back to some of being resourceful and building relationships comes right straight back to you being persistent enough to create little successes. Each each failure that you have, you have a, you find somebody that's going to tell you, no, you still have a point of contact. And you might have somebody tell you, you know, one year and two years later it works out. I've experienced that more than anybody with golf sponsorships and people supporting my golf career. Sometimes it didn't work, and then three years later, it did work. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I, I think, Kenny, did you uh, have a question? I think you were unmuting yourself. Uh, hi there, uh, Kenny Whitman. I believe Kyle just uh, just spoke on, on, on my question there. Thanks very much, Kyle. It's been a pleasure. To be here. Perfect. Thank you. That, this was amazing. Thank you very much, Kyle. For, it was a very uh, powerful and, and timely message for everybody. And I'm glad you were here to share it with us. Um, yeah, you know what I'll do is um, I'm going to uh, include an email address for everyone. I don't know if there's some entrepreneurs that want maybe some help with anything, um, but perfect. I'll include an email and you can email that address if you're looking to you know reach out in that manner and i can follow up with some links and stuff like that Excellent. um but yeah that would be useful and uh if like i said if it's hard to mail the book to you buy the ebook otherwise if you're in canada or the u.s i can mail it to you um give it a couple weeks if you're in the u.s i would say um or uh, if you have any issues buying the book just email that support email oh that's wrong i didn't see i never did well in school here i'll have to do it again sorry Okay, so it's uh, support at Kyle Miller. Kyle Miller Golf Inc. Oh, okay. Sorry. So the first email address was incorrect. So it's a second one. So support. Yeah, there you Kyle go. The Miller author spelling things incorrect. Golf Inc. Com. Perfect. So definitely reach out to Kyle. Thank you very much. Uh, that was that was great. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me, and I greatly appreciate. It. I look forward to uh, having the opportunity to follow up with everyone, and uh, maybe we can furthermore do some other stuff down the line. Perfect. That sounds great. Th thank you. Have a great rest of your Friday, everybody. Thank you. Bye. For Bye. Now.